welcome to this edition of Inside Look. Uh, it's April. Um, hoping, you know, warm weather's around the corner. Hopefully, and that will make the Great American cleanup a lot better, which brings my guests, Marsha and Doug, here. Marsha Goldstein, Doug Reinbold, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, I know about you guys, but people might not. Mm -hmm. Just tell people a little bit about you. All right, I am the executive director of Keep North Out of Our Beautiful, which is uh, a nonprofit 501c3 organization whose mission is to clean up and beautify our town. And we're looking at our seventh annual townwide cleanup on May wow. 4th. And um, it, it's just the time has really gone by. It's, it's totally a labor of love, and there's a lot of preparation involved, as you can imagine. Um, for anybody who wants to sign up, I can give you our website. It's keepnabeautiful.com. And you go to um, uh, clean up vo um, volunteer opportunities and then Great American Cleanup. We're an affiliate of Keep America Beautiful, which people may remember from the Crying Indian, is a national organization whose mission is to do the same. But we, all got, we not only clean up the the, uh, the town once a year, but we also do other things. We have a very successful shoe recycling program with collection bins in several areas all around town. And the wonderful uh, mentally challenged adults from Attleboro Enterprises Incorporated process that whole program. We're grateful to them and they do a fabulous job. And we also do beautification through landscaping of um, town owned sites around around the North Attleboro, such as the entrance to um, Mason Field. Um, a couple of years ago, our wonderful Frank Wojciechowski um, planted flowers and um, a, his signature birdhouse. And he only uses perennials, which come up every year, um, and uh, shrubs and trees. And he just does such a beautiful job around town. Uh, where else? The, Welcome to North Attleboro uh, signs. He planted around those. All the schools have um, uh, been landscaped or refurbished. And this year, I think we're going to be putting shrub, uh, not shrub, shade trees um, on, in the Woodcock Administration Building. Um, not in it, but around it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what did I leave out? Um, the education program. Oh, yes. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I'm in wrapping up educational programs in grades, grades K and 5. I think I have 30 Wow! through March and April, um, all about recycling and what they should be leaving, uh, putting in the bins and what they should leave out of the bins and um, uh, the em environmental impact of so much litter and plastics to our marine life, and it's kind of horrifying. And um, the kids seem to sit up straight and really listen when it comes to the um, deaths and damage to our marine life or uh, uh, animal life in general. When they think of, when they see plastics in the ocean, little pieces, uh, they think it's food. And um, in my understanding is by the year 2050, there will be more pieces of plastic in the ocean than fish and marine life and mammals. Interesting. Yeah, very, very sad. And to scientists have opened the bellies of animals that have already been killed or died for whatever reason, dolphins, whales, seabirds, and they have found uh, um, fishing wire, fishing line, and um, all kinds of pieces of plastic. Wow. And it's very scary, very, very scary. And supposedly some people who are very inventive and creative are, are making machines to uh, vacuum up or sweep up the um, debris in the, in the ocean. Okay, well that guy's who they spent, I watched a 60 Minutes on mm -hmm, it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now it broke. Right. Yeah. Okay. What happened with that? I heard that they are just trying to 
figure out why it broke and how to fix it. I haven't actually kept up on it exactly, but I can go online and check it out. There's, there's so many dedicated people, activists out there who are trying to clean up the oceans. I, I just have no doubt that they will figure out a way to, clean, to figure out how to um, fix these machines and, and sweep up as much debris as they can. No, it's interesting because, yeah, I remember watching that 60 Minutes and it was mm -hmm. like, sounds like a great idea. Right. And it was like a $100 million right. project right. and then right. Right. We need to. it like got one water bottle and it was like awesome. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Yeah, but no, not no. as much as they expected But it to get. wasn't what was intended. Right, it's right. Like, right. I just have high hopes that scientists out there will fig and engineers will figure out how to get rid of the horrible mess. There's something called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which sounds like a, a contained area, like a garden patch, but this is actually um, is floating off of garbage. Texas? It's actually in the Pacific. Um, oh, off of, yeah. okay. Um, it used to be the size of Texas. That's what I meant. Right, that's yeah. what you're thinking. But now my understanding is, is that it's much bigger than that and growing, and the currents um, move the debris all around, and they've been they've had South Sea islands just overcome with debris on their beaches, and it's horrible. Now, Doug, I, I just yeah. what about what everything she's saying made you want to get involved in this? Well, I grew up in this town, and you know I, I walk my dog a lot. I see a lot of litter on the side of the road, and growing up in my parents' front yard, there was always coffee cups, lottery tickets, and, and bottles, and you pick them up, and it seems like two days later, they're back. You know, I was, I'm in another organization, and we talked about doing something like this, but then Alicia Moriarty came to me and told me they were doing this, so we immediately sponsored it, and um, after a few years of them doing it, I wanted to help somewhere in this town. I wanted to do something. I am a townie, and um, <laughs> litter's a concern, so I asked Alicia if it was something I could do to help out, and I met with Masha. And uh, I met the board of directors, and I was overwhelmed at how sincere and dedicated these people really are. Um, there are some great people, and the, the, the volunteers of this town, I think we had 500 volunteers mm -hmm. last year. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's gone up. That's amazing. It's just to see that that many people are so dedicated to keeping this town beautiful and, 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 and doing something to help this town. And, and what Marsha and Frank and everybody does with the beautification programs, the signs are beautiful, the flowers, it just, it really helps the town, I think. And I, I just think that's important. Now, mm -hmm. when you started this venture, did you see it going this far? Never, never. Um, I really didn't envision how successful we would be. And like Doug mentioned, the volunteers and our business sponsors are invaluable to us. We couldn't do any of this without them. We have many, many business sponsors that are loyal year after year. And um, it's a it's it's a win-win because we gain the funds to um, fund our programs and um, all of our supplies and um, they gain recognition as being supportive of the community. And um, you can't lose that way, you know. We try our best to make sure that all the business sponsors are recognized on Facebook, on our website, and in the newspaper. We want them to get, and, there, and also our $250 plus donations, um, the businesses go on our, the back of our t-shirts. Wow. So there's a lot of recognition. And we want to recognize anybody who even donates $5, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as they are um, willing to realize how important this is. Now, coming to importance, the signature event mm -hmm. that you're doing mm -hmm. is the seventh annual Great American Cleanup. Exactly. Let's delve into that. I mean, okay. that's what this is really all about. Right. Well, um, there's a lot of preparation involved. Um, we have people sign up on our website and they just have to answer a few questions. It's very simple. We provide t-shirts for them, gloves, and litter bags. And what I want to emphasize is that whoever registers online needs to come to one of our two town hall events. That's when they pick up, the, they confirm their registration and they pick up all their supplies and we ask 
people to please attend one of those nights. Now this year they are Thursday, April 18th, and the next week the 25th from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock at the Town Hall. And it's just a great way for me to meet the volunteers. One of the gratifying things is that you'll oh, we'll always hear people say, thank you so much for putting this together. And we say, no, thank you for taking mm -hmm. part. And um, we, I, we can't forget the fabulous raffles. We have a fabulous raffle table that everybody loves every year. The tickets are very inexpensive. They're a dollar each. Wow. And they are um, f six tickets for five dollars. So it's like a free ticket. And we ha I'll just name a couple of the th items. We have several gift cards from restaurants in North Bowl, and we have Doug's famous uh, Death by Chocolate, where he has giant-sized chocolate uh, <laughs> bars, and um, he just has access to these kind of things. Okay, sorry to interject. <laughs> what are these things? It's a uh, five-pound Hershey bar. It is uh, two one pound Reese's peanut butter cup bars, uh, cups, and uh, a Hershey Kiss that is uh, probably about uh, eight inches tall filled with other Hershey Kisses. And there is a Kit Kat bar that's probably about uh, maybe a foot, foot and a half long and about a foot wide. And it's uh, filled with other Kit Kats inside it. Where does one purchase such <laughs> things as this? Down at Hershey Chocolate World. Oh, okay. We've got to go to Pennsylvania. Yeah, no kidding. All right. No kidding. It might, might be worth a trip. <laughs> we have all kinds of themed baskets. Uh, I put together um, like a, a family fun game night with lots of jigsaw puzzles and card games and things like that. Um, somebody else is putting an Italian food basket together. Um, let me think. There's a Can lottery tickets. Yeah. Lo um, there's a lottery ticket tree. This year we're having a 50-50 for the first wow. time. Um, so the event's grown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, um, yeah, I think more and more, you know, it's not just about fund gathering. It's not just about raising funds. It's about awareness. We want people to realize that appearance of our town is important and people should not be littering and recycle correctly according to the town guidelines um, and you know support what our town should look like you know it should ideally be beautiful in every way when I walk my dog every morning I see a new piece of litter that may not have been there the next the morning before and it's a little discouraging have you noticed a little bit of a difference, though, since It's hard to this? tell. It's hard to tell. I would hope that there is a difference. Um, certainly, we have tried our best to create awareness. You know, there's always those bad apples that insist on throwing things out the car window in the middle of the night. But <laughs> let's hope they're few and far between. Now, Doug, what impressed you about Keep North Attleboro Beautiful and everything that made you just kind of... You know, it's... <coughs> excuse me. The... the the board of directors, and, and like I said earlier, the passion and uh, what the effort they put behind to put this on, but seeing the amount of volunteers that came into the town hall to pick up their stuff, and uh, the the kids, the ranging from kids to, to older people, and they would go there and I'd watch the dedication of them trying to pull stuff out of the woods and different things, mm -hmm. and I, I was in one of the trucks last year and we were picking up the trash and I could not believe the piles of bags we had pulled out of there. And uh, it just really opened my eyes to say, this is, this is pretty serious. We spent a good time on 120, and uh, we went down the road a couple days later, my wife and I, and I'm looking, and it didn't look uh, much different than before we started wow. from people throwing stuff out there again. Now, it was, it was spotless. I mean, it was beautiful when we were done. But two, three days later, there was nip bottles and, and cups out there, and it just, it really, it, it, it kind of hurt because you're saying the effort, these people spent their whole day cleaning and now people just threw stuff right back out there. So how does that make you feel like Marsha and Doug as members of Keep North Attleboro Beautiful that have made this effort to do this? It must be frustrating. It's kind of saddening to me. I just, uh, you know, uh, I mean, 
we, everybody knows not to litter. Everybody knows things are recyclable, and to just turn around and, and toss that, and I, I really amazed at the amount of nip bottles. I can't even believe the amount of <coughs> nip bottles that are thrown on the side of the road. And cigarette butts. Um, somebody is a loser on a scratch ticket, so where does it go? Out the window. And I just now, when you pick those up, do you check them first? <laughs> I assume they're losing or else they wouldn't be on the ground. But, um, you know, I just want to take a moment to compare in the United States with uh, some other advanced countries. I have a friend who travels quite a bit, and I always ask for a litter report when she comes back. <laughs> and um, okay. almost all the time she says there were no, was no litter or way less than we have here. She goes to Scandinavia quite a bit. And I understand from Frank, um, our dear friend Frank, that Germany is very advanced <coughs> in Excuse the whole recycle process. And uh, my friend tells a story that Finland, for example, or any, pr probably all those sc Scandinavian countries, the people are just rule compliant and they're taught at a very young age what the right thing to do is whether it's not littering, picking up after your dog, be, you know, harming someone else, being violent. They're just rule compliant from the start. And I, ju I just think it's unfortunate that we don't, on, a, on the whole, teach our children to be rule compliant. So you must enjoy driving through New Jersey. Um, that was my home state. <laughs> I know, it's so. my father's home state as well, so. <laughs> there are parts of New Jersey that are gorgeous. Oh, 100%. No, but um, I, I don't really, you know, if anybody out there has a great idea in ch how to change people's minds about not littering, um, I don't know what it is exactly, or to put the effort into recycling properly. I just don't know. Well, that was what I was going to get to is I guess I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I've talked to Michelle Bernier and everything, and... Mm -hmm. I'm very confused as to what I can put into recycling. A lot recycling. of people are. So what is the deal? Okay, what the deal do do? is that um, you need to go on the North Attleboro website, and there is um, comprehensive information under the Solid Waste Department about what does and does not go in the recycle bin. Um, certain plastics go in, cert certain ones don't. The clear plastics and what they call clamshells, it's the one with the hinge, okay. you know, the plastic container mm -hmm. with the hinge that blueberries and strawberries come in, that is recyclable. What about a milk? Metals, um, milk, milk, plastic. Because it's not clear. Right, Plas well, plastic um, milk jugs are recyclable. Okay. Okay, but like the black, um, you may see a black um, pl um, plastic, takeout container, right? like from the restaurants, not recyclable because they're black. And they Why can't recycle. That? I have no idea, but they can't process colored plastic. But let me just tell you, there's a fabulous website called RecycleSmartMA.org. Okay. And I would love everybody to go to that. And it's a fabulous Massachusetts-based website that has a ton of information about recycling. And not just what can be recycled and what not, but the latest trends in um, you know, the countries that are accepting and not accepting uh, recyclables. And after every holiday, I notice they have a page that says, if you have waste from a certain uh, party from related to a holiday, this is what you do with it. It's a fabulous fabulous website. Well, that was a, what I was going to say is like, for instance, paper towels, mm -hmm. wrapping paper, not they're recyclable. not recyclable. That is very conflicting. It's because to me. there's not enough fiber to work with in those things. Okay. That's my understanding. But there is a huge market out there for cardboard and paper. So all paper and cardboard, if clean, should be uh, recycled. So metal for instance, cans. like your pizza box, you don't want that because it's greasy. All right. It's controversial. They say now Recycle Smart is saying even grease is okay, but not remnants of the pizza itself. Okay, but the grease is all right. 
That's what Just I've not heard. like the cheese? That's what oh, I've that's heard. the word right. on the street right. now? Right, the word on, uh, from Recycle Smart. Oh, okay. Um, all boxes, um, car, you know, anything cardboard, um, cereal boxes, obviously um, plastic water bottles are all recyclable. Soda cans, things like that. Yes, yeah, soda yeah. cans, tuna cans, uh, dog and cat food cans, any kind of metal that's not broken, like metal jars right. and bottles, totally recyclable. Um, what else? Do not ever put plastic thin film or bags in the recycle bin because they clog up the machinery at the plant, at the factory. Mm -hmm. No plastic bags. Um, they should be deposited in a special bin at, your, at the supermarkets. And that can even be a bread bag. I have a bag that I use in my demonstration at schools that oranges came in. It's a plastic bag. That goes in the supermarket bins that are specially for that purpose. But plastic bags never go in the recycle um, bin. A, a dear friend of mine had her, <coughs> I saw a giant plastic bag in the recycle bag, in the recycle bin. What was it filled with? Perfectly good recyclables. But it was in a plastic bag. So I said to her, please, from now on, you know, your intentions are good, that everything goes in loose in the recycle bin, not in a plastic bag. Now, are you averse to the plastic bag being thrown in the trash? Um, yes, because if it lands in a, a, a landfill, it could end up being, um, you know, blown. Sometimes they blow out of the top of the trucks and they end up in, uh, in trees. Okay, you know? here, I'm, I'm not trying to get into a debate here, but herein lies my question, is that trash bags are made of plastic, therefore, what's the difference? That's a great question, and I hadn't even thought of that. Let's hope that someday the, uh, there, I would love to see <laughs> within my lifetime of, of bags that are totally biodegradable. It's a great question. So I guess there has to be some plastic in the landfills. Never thought of that, but if it's in the plastic... You can't, it's hard to put. I mean, what are the trash? It's a really, the really good question that I haven't even thought of. Made out you're of right. You're absolutely the right. Plastic. They're made right. of plastic. They're plastic. Right. You're absolutely right. And I didn't even think of that. I don't think you're ever going to stop every form of it. But of big, course not. The big but thing is to try to get as much of it that we can do recycled or at least in the proper spot instead of ending up on the streets or any, but in landfills for 100 years. Right. But it's just always something interesting. I think of like with Mansfield going... Um, what is it? Plastic, plastic band. band, bag band, and, right? Yeah, that's a really good like point. That. Right. It's just like, well, I'm conflicted. Like, right. what's happening? <laughs> right. You know, the the buzzword that I what I've read is that the, it's not just about recycling; it's about reducing, reducing the plastic bottles. What and is it? Going Reduce, for, reuse, and recycle. Right. The, but but recycling isn't enough. It's about reducing the packaging, reducing the number of bottles we buy and, and only use the re reusable uh, plastic bottles. There's just too many plastic yeah. bottles but even like we that we don't did, need. With the Great American Cleanup, we were given a bottle of water, but now we've gotten, instead of doing that because it defeated the purpose of what we're doing, <laughs> we, we ordered the, the big uh, five-gallon uh, buckets with the spigots. So now okay. instead of handing the volunteers water bottles, we're going to you know, pour the water for them so it reduces our own usage. Oh, that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, I'm glad Doug brought that up because here I am preaching in the schools to reduce the number of plastics that we're using. And we thought, wait a second, we can't bring <laughs> cases and cases of bottled water to the pizza party after the um, cleanup anymore because it's a little hypocritical. So um, we have to abandon that. You know, and um, so the, so the real the real um, push now is for reducing uh, the the amount of plastics that we have. That's where and the best. That's right, the right. majority of yeah. right. We so don't go into my office because I've got a lot of plastic water bottles. <laughs> okay, I won't go in. But, but I put them in the recycling bin. Does that's that good. Count? It does count, but okay. we still want to. 
<laughs> reduce the number of plastics that we are using. All right, we've got a couple minutes left. This goes okay. by so fast. But I really want to get people to be aware of what's going on with the Great American Cleanup, because that's why we're here. Sure. Um, so whatever the two of you want to add about that and say about that in the next two minutes, sure. please. Um, I encourage people who are watching this to think about uh, signing up, registering. It's a great way to um, build camaraderie with your employees or with your family. And despite the fact that it sounds a little on the gross side to be picking up litter, everybody has a great time. And they just have, a, they just say that was so much fun. And it's a great thing to teach little kids, too. We um, encourage people of all ages to help out. There's plenty of litter to go around in the town. People get to pick their own sites um, where they want to clean up. And a lot of them say, wherever I'm needed. So we give them a, an area. Um, so once again, it's keepnabeautiful.com. And um, it's under the Great American Cleanup, or GAC. Um, the important thing is to remember to go to the town hall nights, April 18th or 25th, uh, 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Bring your cash for the raffles, and you will get um, this year the shirts are yellow. Yeah. We're trying to go through all the different colors before we have to start over. Yellow is probably good if you're on the side <laughs> of the street. That's right. Um, we note the sponsors on the back. I'm working on that now with Peter Finn, who's a wonderful um, printer. And um, what else do I want to say? Well, we're working on the what tote I... bags. And yes, we're we on are the uh, actually having a, a brand new item, which is tote bags with our logo on it to have people take their shirts, bags, and gloves home with them. Oh, very cool. And to please reuse at the grocery store. Yes, and um, that, that's the first year we are, this is the first year we're providing reusable canvas bags with our logo on it for use at the, Great idea. At the town hall. Um, we just look forward to having as many people sign up as possible. It's rewarding, it's fun. Please come back for the pizza party, and um, don't forget your cash for the raffles. Um, I don't know what else to say, but we are grateful to all of our volunteers. What we about could, you, Doug? Could not do it without them. Yeah, no, to reiterate what Masha said, it's actually a fun time. It really is. You'd think picking up trash on the side of the road would be monotonous, but it's actually <laughs> a, it's a good time, and, and it's, it is rewarding. It's, it's nice to see. I mean... It's amazing joining this organization, opening my eyes up to some of the areas in this town and how beautiful it really is and could be, and seeing the people do that. It is a rewarding time, and uh, I would encourage people, church groups or you know organizations, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, you know, put together a team. It's a, it's a great time. It's very very mm -hmm. rewarding. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we haven't talked about? You've got about a minute. Uh, um. Well, we have some beautification projects that we've been talking mm -hmm. about, like Marcia said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's some other stuff that we're working on. We've talk, discussed different uh, conservation areas that we've yes, we're thought working, about looking at. We're working got with about 30 seconds. Conservation Commission to try to open up uh, some of their areas for passive recreation. So we're thrilled to be collaborating with the Conservation Commission. That's awesome. You guys do yeah. a wonderful job. Doug, welcome aboard. Thank you. Um, Marsha, as always, can't believe it's been I know, that many this years. long. Um, but Doug, has been, like Doug has been a fabulous asset, I just want to tell you. <laughs> it feels like it's Thank only you. been like two years, but OK. I know, time flies. Yeah. Well, we hope to see you all there at the Great American Cleanup. May 4th. May 4th here in North Attleboro. And you've got to go to Town Hall on one of those dates. April 18th. April 18th. And 25th. And 25th to make sure you can get there. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for watching this edition of Inside Look.